Mm. Oh, I got burned some of the the holy ancients to this. Willie Lynch prophesied the end of white supremacy. Will, Willie Lynch, did you know? Did you know that Willie Lynch prophesied the end of white supremacy? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And it's in How to Make a Slave or Let's Make a Slave, if you want to be a little more proper. You understand? Uh, let's Make a Slave, the Willie Lynch papers, letters, you understand? And Let's Make a Slave, and we just, we just uncovered this. We don't, don't want to go the Christopher uh, Colon route of discovery because... Um, but so far, so far, we haven't heard anybody talk about this. Please, anybody who, who knows this document, go and look at your copy. Mine says right here in the third paragraph of Woolly, William Lynch's message where he talks about what he had in his bag of foolproof methods for controlling the black slaves. He says he guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. Get that? For at least 300 years. And then when you go to the end of this um, speech by William Lynch, there's an editor's note. And the editor's note says that this speech was delivered by a white slave owner or slave master named Willie Lynch, or more properly, William Lynch, or Bill Lynch as well, right? And so it says, this speech was delivered by a white slave owner, William Lynch, on the bank of the James River in 1712. Do you see what is going on currently? We have our first so-called black African-American president. I say so-called, not because we doubt whether he's black or whether he's an African-American. It's not because of that, but because there were other Negro or black presidents. That's just an open secret right there. Go check it out. But here's what's significant. In this particular speech of Woolley Lynch that was delivered on the bank of the James River, a couple of years, more than a couple, maybe it was about seven, six, seven, I got to get the year that um, Queen, the Queen of England came to America, and she came for the 400th anniversary of the, the Jamestown colony in Virginia, and this is the same place, the same area that this is talking about for its 400th anniversary, so that's 400 years. Now, what Willie Lynch is saying here is that this method for controlling the black slaves, the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, if it's installed correctly, and we can see based on what is written in this document that it was, quote, installed correctly, that it will do what? It will control your black slaves. It will control the slaves for at least, at least 300 years. So when we now do the math, do the math, 1712 plus 300 equals what? Take a pen and paper if you have to. Please do this math. Because the correct answer is 2012. 2012. 2012 is next year. Now, if you don't know... There's a lot of folks and a lot of people past and present that says that 2012 is bound to be a very, very interesting year. I mean, in fact, we're living in interesting and very perilous times as well. However, 2012 is the end date, was Willie Lynch's prophesied end date for the possible ending of the control, this, 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 um, this psychological, you understand, this spell of, of, of niggerism, you understand, of niggritude, you understand, and, and neglect of who we are as a people. This is, this is so very interesting, my brothers and sisters. I don't know, I, I feel like shouting it from a mountaintop. You understand, for, for shouting it from the mountaintop. This is so very interesting because in addition, if you haven't caught this update, they're, they're already putting in effect one of the last, one of the last things that Willie Lynch said in his speech about not forgetting to pitch the old black versus the young black male. 
and the young black male versus the old black male and using the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves. This is what this presidential, this 2012 election is all about. Think about it for a moment. Think about, uh, we have a cane here, right? And when Obama ran before, he ran against Mac Cain. Now the possibility is very likely that he's going to run against Cain. And this Cain, this Cain, is a black man, a black man who is totally um, apathetic or unfeeling or uncaring to the plight of the poor. He looked at the Wall Street protests, and he thinks corporations and in America and the rich, you know, you hear this thing going on a lot. And I was even watching the 700 Club with uh, Pat Robinson, and they're talking about this... Um, um, how they're against the taxes, raising the taxes for the rich. You understand, saying that this will destroy the ability of America or the rich are the ones who create jobs. The rich are the ones who create wealth. What's Shatam? That's a lie. What do you mean the rich create wealth? No, the rich are able to either control, take, or steal wealth. You understand, are able to get their hands, their the majority of them, not all, but the majority of their greedy hands around the wealth, and then they sell the poor people the lie about they create wealth. They create wealth. Can you believe that? In the history of the world, we have a particular class of rich people who are under the delusion that they create wealth. They create wealth. Then they add to that illusion, another illusion, that they create jobs. Well, if you're talking about America, we know how this creation of corporation began. It began with, let's make a slave. It, be, it all began with, let's make a slave. And here's the ironic thing, is that they're marching on Wall Street and, and the protests to occupy Wall Street and, and, and pray for those, those people and many of our brothers and sisters down there in that as well as the, the 1,500 cities around the world because this thing is almost like a, a I, I won't call it a virus, but in a sense it's become like, uh, it's, it's, it's like a spirit that's upon everyone, and they're trying to demonize the media. It's trying to demonize these people, some of them who are, who are half awake. See, some of them are, are just waking up to it because many of them have lost their jobs, they've lost their homes, they can't get the type of, they have all these student loans, um, they've been watching a lot of these documentaries and videos, now they really know the half of the story that they didn't learn in school, you know what I'm saying, they could have just saved their money and basically bought a lot of these videos and books and really read and taught themselves things. And when you look at a lot of the people who are the so-called um, big job creators, in the mainstream of society, the majority of these folks did not graduate from college. The people who are, some of the people who are earning some of the top salaries and have actually, can, can be called creators of something, even if you want to say the, the late uh, Steve Jobs and, and others, you understand, even, even Bill Gates, he, he dropped out of college, and even some of these other people, they went after their dream, their vision, because you have to remember, they wasn't really subjected to this let's make a slave. You understand, they weren't sub subjected to this. You understand? But that, that's just one of the things I wanted to, to, to comment on. So when you hear this lie, you know, about the rich, you know, are the ones that create wealth, don't believe the lie. They don't create wealth. The wealth is already here. The wealth is given by God. You understand? The wealth is created by God and given by God. It's not these people creating wealth. Like they are making, making wealth. They create money. You understand? They, they print money. They create illusions of what is, is delusively considered wealth or prosperity. They create this false image. But you know what's so very interesting? Um... The 2012. Let's just deal a little bit more. We're gonna we're gonna touch on the rich, because the rich is, you know, the rich is. Well, let's touch on it now. We'll touch on it separately. You understand? We'll touch on it separately as well, because we're gonna try to keep this on message. 
and, and, and straight to the point. Now about the 2012 thing. This is about 2012. Before we go on with this next part from James. So, you know, get your Bibles, have your pen and your papers. We're going to go to James, right? James chapter, James chapter um, 5. James chapter 5. But let's just deal with 2012, the let's make a slave. For all the time that many of us have been looking at this document, you know what we haven't done, many of us? And I didn't do this before. If someone else did it, I'm sure they would have put it out. Once this word gets out there, you're going to hear a lot of others also going, checking it out, hopefully, and putting it out or hearing what we're saying and accepting the truth of it and putting it out. But Willie Lynch, William Lynch, because I shouldn't call him Willie. He's, it's not like he's our buddy. You understand? Um, moment, maybe in the pejorative sense and not even then. Some of y'all get it, right? Um, but William Lynch, William Lynch or Slave Massa Lynch, he said that his technique, this foolproof technique for controlling black people, who he referred to in this document as niggers, and as slaves, not niggers, not niggas, as niggers and as slaves. He says that his foolproof method, if it's installed correctly, it is, if, if the Negroes are subly broken, breaking the man. So, so now you hear people say, if you need a man up and you need some man training, right? Okay, yeah, we, we, black man, we do need all of that. But how can you avoid how it all started. How can you avoid the beginning? And this is what they refuse to do, whether it's looking at Wall Street. You know, on the wall of, you know, Wall Street got its name. We talked about it before, but if you're watching this for the first time, we'll just give you a refresher how Wall Street got its name. Wall Street got its name because it was the wall on which they so they lined up and paraded and, and felt up and inspected their teeth and their body parts to find out whether they were healthy men, women, and children, where they bought and sold in stocks and bonds. Don't you get it? In stocks and bonds. In stocks and bonds, our ancestors, who were the lost sheep of the house of Israel, who were the black sheep of the family. That's how Wall Street got its name, and that's how this whole um, falsified and calcified so-called economic system that's breaking down right in front of our eyes. You see, they don't want to really, they don't, they don't want to tell you the truth. You see, the real truth is that the origination of the Wall Street system began with slavery. Front and center, put a big fat period there. That's how it all began. And then because it was successful with enslaving the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the black sheep of the family, they were able over time, of course, to export many of these slave, these man-breaking, slave-making ideas to other nations and to other peoples and to other cultures around the world. You see, it's always the so-called black man, and when we say generically the male and female, in America who's making anything that really reaches on the soulful level of the people, especially the music and certain aspects of the culture, positive and, unfortunately, negative aspects of um, black pop culture that resonates with all people around the world, all people around the world. most recent example, of course, is hip-hop. You understand? Uh, another example, a little previous to hip hop, you understand, but a little less noticed was, was Rastafari, Rastafarianism connected with the whole holistic, organic culture. Yes, Rastafari was the progenitor, you understand, of the whole organic eating, eating, eating less, less meat or no meat and dairy and red meat and the herbs and, and, and the alternative so-called lifestyle as far as, a note on that, because a lot of things go into our alternative category that we say fire bun. Without apology, fire bun. Some of the reggae artists have had to, you know, step down a little bit or back up a little bit because, like, the homosexual agenda. I mean, that's also part of it, too. You understand? And stay tuned when we touch on U.S. slavery and, 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 and child abuse. 
You see, you, you know, U.S. slavery and, and, and pedophilia. You know what I'm saying? U.S. slavery and, and human trafficking. You, you see, you know, it's, a, it's amazing how, how hypocritical. Well, you know, we shouldn't even say it's amazing. Let me make a little resolution here. And may the King of Kings, in the name of the Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, strengthen me so I can carry through. Not to say it's amazing, because it's not amazing. You know what I'm saying? It's only prophetic. You know what I'm saying? It's only real that we're seeing the, the so-called rulers deny the real causes. Because the real causes, the real wealth, first of all, of America is you, black man. is you, black woman. You're the real wealth of America, but you don't know it. You understand? Because they, they got all these schemes and, and conspiracies. And this document, you, you see, once you get this document, once you check out this document, and a lot of this will upload into our website, free downloads, and it should be out there elsewhere, but some of the newer versions of Let's Make a Slave, they take out the word nigger and they put the word black or something like that, or take out the word negro, the N-word. That is not authentic. Don't, don't go for that BS. You know what I'm saying? You don't take out a word or whatnot. If the, if the Nazis said some filthy, inhuman, despicable thing about white converted Jews in Europe, the Jews don't water that down. They don't water that down. This happened. They don't stop talking about it, and nobody dares go up to them and say, listen, um, stop talking about the Holocaust. Because it's already done, uh, the Germans paid reparations, most of the Nazis are dead. So you can move on to something else. Move on to something else. Why don't you move on? Can you imagine any of them dear saying that? But even if people don't want to make those changes, you know what will help make those changes? The times that we're living in. The times, them are changing. You know saying? The times, them are changing, master. Bottom rail on top, Masa. Bottom rail on top. Now look at this election coming up, 2012 election. Look at what William Lynch said in his letter that the introduction of Let's Make a Slave. He said this method will control your black slaves for 300 years. When did he say that speech? You understand? When did he deliver the speech? He delivered it on the banks of the James River in 1712. Do the math. 300 plus 1712 is 2012. So we can say this document, we're on the eve of having two Negroes, one black American, one African American, the black versus the African, the old man versus the young man, the light skin versus the dark skin, or vice versa. Isn't this interesting? And there's, and there's, and there's more you need to know. But 2012 is significant. Because Let's Make a Slave also prophesizes 2012. Go check it out for yourself. More to come. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere, my people.